Here are three examples of basic counting problems, uh, all using the fundamental counting principle, the multiplication principle, that when you have multiple choices, you just multiply the number of choices. So let me just go through them pretty quickly. So I manage a furniture store. I am offering a special deal on a package that includes a sofa, a coffee table, and a lamp all together. And I want to just get a sense of which of the choices are more profitable or sell best or whatever. And there's five choices of the sofa. There's three for the table and seven for the lamp. And I'd like to keep track of all the possible combinations of these guys. So and like I'd like to make a spreadsheet. How big is this spreadsheet going to be? Um, is this going to be practical or is it just going to be kind of bewildering? So here we've got um, the sofa. Got five choices for that. And we've got the table. We've got three choices for that. And the lamp. We've got seven choices for that sucker. Okay. So for each of the choices of the sofa, I can do any combination of the, lamp, the table and the lamp. And for any choice of the table, I can still do any choice of the lamp. So all of the different possibilities are active here. And the total is just going to be 5 times 3 times 7. And I'm not going to write it out, but if you want to convince yourself, just make the spreadsheet. Actually, make all the rows of the spreadsheet. You're going to need, for every possible choice of the sofa, you're going to need all 21 of the table lamp combinations. That's a big number. That's 105. It might not be the best idea to actually be so detailed in this kind of situation. But this is a classic example. We've got three separate choices. They don't affect each other at all, um, but they're all active, and you're just going to multiply. Okay, so a lottery problem, okay? So suppose for this super duper ball lottery, they draw uh, the numbers one through 12 in order, and to win, I have to pick the order exactly. So what's the probability of winning? So I often like to just go straight to probability questions. The reason that's very similar to a counting question is that in this case, there's only one winning order out of all the different orders. So it's just gonna be one over the number of orders. So the probability, is going to be 1 over the number of choices. And so I just need to know the number of choices. OK. Well, it turns out to exa be exactly the same principle as the previous problem. So the first one they pick could be 1 through 12. So there's 12 choices for that first one. Then they've picked one of the, the numbers already, and there's 11 choices left. And then they've picked on two of the numbers. There's going to be 10 choices left, all the way down to 3 times 2. And at the last one, we could put in a times 1. It doesn't really, doesn't really do anything. If they've picked uh, the 11 of the 12 numbers, there's only one left. So really quickly, one way to get clear on these kinds of problems, especially if it gets more complicated. If there's a lot of different choices, you can actually just come up with one of them. So let's say, uh, let me put in parentheses. Let's say they picked 7 first, and then 5, and then 11, and then 3, and then 2, and then 4, and then 8. It's 10, see if I can. And then 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What am I missing here? Oh, 12. OK. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then nine. Okay, so there's a particular way they could have come out. This there's twelve possibilities for this one. Once that's a seven, let's suppose that it came out as a seven. Then there's eleven possibilities. Every number but seven for this guy. Suppose that's a five. Well, now there's all numbers except seven or five that this could be, that's 10 possibilities. So there's 12 choices. That seven could have been any one of 12 things. But that five, once we've picked the seven, that five could be any one of 11 things. It can't be seven. And down to, well, the nine is determined. Once I've got all of these numbers picked, there's no choice but, but to pick the nine. So that's why the times one there. Well, there's a notation for that. That's 12 factorial. And what is that? Ooh. One, so that's 479 million. So the odds, or the probability rather, of winning is going to be oops, 1 over 479 million and 1,600. Okay. 
So here is something where the act of picking the first choice is what restricts the next choice, and the act of picking the first two is what restricts the next one. So it has a little bit of a different feel from the previous one. That I had to, I went ahead and told you all these numbers: the three, five, the five, three, and seven. Here, it's the eleven choices for the second one is determined by the fact that I've already picked one of the numbers to be the first one in the row. Okay. So here's another one. Okay. So in other words, another uh, problem where it's one over, the probability of winning something is one over the number of choices. That's going to be true when there's exactly one winning choice, only one winning choice. And it's going to be a little more interesting when there's more ways to win. Okay, so I just want to figure out how many different ways you can flip 30 coins. Okay, well, the first coin, there's just its heads or tails. The second coin is not affected by the first coin. That's heads or tails. The third coin is not affected. So this is a bit different from the previous example. That was where the first choice affected the second one, etc. Here, all the choices are identical, and they don't affect each other. But there's 30 of them, and so that's going to be 2 to the 30th. What is that? Whoa, that's big. It's about a billion. Okay. So here, the probability of winning is about... 1 over 1 billion. Not very good chances. Okay. So this is a classic example of repeated identical choices that don't affect each other, and that's where you get the number of, of ways each choice can happen to the power of how many choices are being made.